Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. And today is a day that I'm pretty excited about because I have a very special guest. So I'd like to introduce Kelly Nolan. Kelly, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be with you today. Kelly is Vice President of Sales Engagement and Events for Hilton Corporation and happens to be my sister, so it, that's what is a couple of reasons it's really special to have have you on today. So thank you for agreeing to to join me. I love it. I love talking about Hilton and I love talking about what I do. So thanks for having me. You Especially do, and that your podcast. I love it. <laughs> it's it's you know the the word love is is actually the reason I thought of inviting you on today because I've noticed for the past couple of years that you actually put that on LinkedIn, you put it in post, you post about your job on Facebook, for goodness sakes. And you are you're genuinely one of the few people, and I know I've said this to you quite a few times yeah. before when we talk about work, who loves your job. And what's so unique is that you've been with the same organization for over 28 years. And that is just such an anomaly. So I had to have you come on and, and, and talk about that because it's, it's so unique. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I love it. I am so proud of my company and, and the team that I get to work with every day. So I am thrilled to talk about a little bit today and what my experience has been like. Well, that, that's awesome. So let's just let's just start with that. Then um, we won't okay. we won't we won't bore anyone with family stories. Although who knows if this gets enough downloads, yeah. maybe maybe we'll we'll come back and do an episode <laughs> about that. Um, but but why, why don't you start if you wouldn't mind, Kelly? Just talk a little bit about what your role is today and what you do. So my job is to look after the team that plans all of the customer events for Hilton. Um, so we've been doing this for years, probably about 15, 16 years, there's been a group that's always planned our customer events for Hilton. And, and so you think, you know, what are customers for Hilton? You go on vacation, you stay in a hotel, you know, who are the customers? How do you get these customers? Well, we have an, what we call above property team, Hilton Worldwide Sales, who actually manages the account, just like any other business manages accounts. Our sales organization will manage accounts for Hilton. So say it's Coca-Cola or Four Corner Resources wants to have a meeting at a hotel, the sales team, the sales organization is the one that works those relationships and then sends that group or that event or that conference to a hotel. So they manage those relationships on a global basis. So I am part of that organization. And so we put on all the customer events for our customers. So they could be connected to an industry or they could just be Hilton events. So we've been doing that for a long time. And then a couple of years ago, actually about a year before COVID, we actually added to our team and we started taking on all of the internal conferences that Hilton puts on. So this could be brand conferences. So it could be like if all of our Hilton and Conrad and Waldorf Astoria hotels wants to have a conference, we'll do those. It could be global owners conferences. It could be conferences for our commercial organization. So we started doing that a couple of years ago before COVID and before the whole world changed. So I get to lead a team of about 15 people that executes those events and no better job in the world. And, and you mean it. And that's what is just, you, um, you know, it's so fascinating to me and why I like really talking to you because you just, you see the energy, you feel the energy. I, I want to you know, get into that, but you mentioned COVID. So let's, um, mm -hmm. let's just start there. How has that changed in you know, your job, given that it's event centric? Uh, mm -hmm. to say the least that, that that's a big that's a big uh yeah the world's changed a lot and and um what what has that meant for you what has that meant for your team yeah that's that's it was a really tough time of course for everybody I mean it sounds kind of silly to even say that that's stating the obvious but when COVID hit uh, events just started canceling and you probably saw all over the news you know the the government would in a lot of states would not even allow large gatherings so our whole world fell apart pretty quickly. So we started having to roll back all the plans for meetings, conferences, events, incentive trips, things that we've been planning for years. We had to start rolling all those back. And our company took a huge hit at the time. Of course, as all hotel business, all hotel companies did, you know, people weren't traveling, they weren't staying in hotels, they weren't going to weddings or events in hotels. And so my team was furloughed. 
uh, except for there was two of us that stayed on board to, and we started working on virtual events, you know, like this, like, you know, virtual Zoom teams, WebEx type of platforms. We had to learn a, a little bit of a different way to connect our customers with our salespeople. Um, and we started working on that and that lasted for about six months and before we were able to bring our team back. And it wasn't the full team. I lost about half my team. Um, so it was probably one of the toughest years that I've ever been through. And again, I feel like that's stating the obvious. Probably everybody could say the same thing, but losing a team of incredible people was, um, was rough. And, and so when we were able to start bringing people back, um, that was just game changing for us. So, and it was hard on them coming back too, after being on furlough for six months, so they started coming back. We were able to, in the spring of this year, get all of the conferences up and running again, you know, as, as a hospitality business, we're in the business of people serving people. And so we want to show our customers it's safe to have in-person events. And so they approved all the conferences to come back. They approved my team coming back on board and we were able to start hiring again and, and bringing back a team. And we still were, we're hired for one more position right now. We've got one more in January, then we'll be back to, to full, full steam ahead. And it's just fantastic. So we've got our first conference coming up in Vegas in December, and I can't wait. So what? Uh, so your team was already always virtual, correct? You've been you've been managing a virtual team. Um, touch on that for a second, because that's new to a lot of us, myself included. We we were always on site in the office yeah. every day, and we're having to adjust as so many people are right now. Many companies, as I'm sure you know, are you know realize that that's a model that they're going to stick with. Um, what yeah. advice, if you have any, I'm putting you on the spot here, do you have for, yeah. for folks who manage a virtual team to still have it feel like a team? Well, I, I can tell you because I've done both. So we, we, I have worked remote for probably about 12 years now, but, but leading a team for the past four and, and all being remote and virtual because we travel all over the place. You know, part of our role is to go to wherever the events are, where the customers are. Um, and so we, we get to travel to some really great places. And, and, you know, one of my bosses at one time told me that my office is in the airport and, and that feels true back in, you know, pre COVID, I was on the road probably three weeks out of the, the year. And so it, back then we, you know, we saw each other all the time and in really awesome places, you know, we'd go in and have planning meetings in Cabo or, you know, in, in, uh, we did one in Hawaii right before the pandemic because we were planning an incentive trip. I mean, how great is that? You know, again, best job in the world. I get I have an incredible team and we get together and experience these amazing properties that are part of Hilton. Um, no complaints, right? But when we weren't able to do that anymore and we weren't traveling, we had to find new ways of, of really keeping those relationships going. And so because we weren't able to be together and we went two years without seeing each other. And, and I actually have two people on my team right now that I've never met in person. Wow. So I'm going to meet them in a couple of weeks in Vegas, but I've never met them in person. So that's just weird. But, you know, we, we try to really stay connected like this, you know, virtually through Zoom calls, team calls every week. We do one-on-ones every week. We do weekly or bi-weekly team meetings and we try and keep things fun. This coming week, we're doing a costume party for Halloween. And I know that's nothing, I, you guys at Four Quarters do it all the time, but you're trying to find different ways to, to still stay connected, stay engaged as much as we can and do a business a little bit differently. And, and I tell you, one of the biggest things is to get back out on the road. There's nothing like being together face-to-face -face in person. So we have almost the whole team going out together to Vegas in a couple of weeks. We've got a big industry event. We've got lots of customer events. It's, it's IMEX. It's our biggest trade show of the year in the industry. We've got 450 customers coming to our first event at our new resort, which is Resorts World. And it's going to be awesome. We're on a, a rooftop overlooking the strip and, and, and we're, we've got a ton of customers, ton of hotels, a ton of our corporate people coming. And then we're also at the same time planning for this conference that I mentioned that we're going to have out there in December, and it's going to be for about 800 people. So we're going to have the whole team together for the first time, and it's just going to be incredible because there's nothing like it. This nope. this is this is one way of working, but as often as you can get together, I would still say you know try and make those those connections when you can. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey for us and for a lot of. Um the customers of ours that I speak with, where it, it seems like such a great idea to offer that you know, virtual work environment. 
but now that we've all been doing it for a while, you start to realize that it's, it's not, you know, all about better roses, right? So, you know, everyone likes the idea of it, but you, you lose certain things, you lose camaraderie, you lose, um, you know, just that personal connection that, that, that humans need. And, and it's going to be an interesting thing to observe uh, over the next year or two to see you know, where companies ultimately land with that. And even at Four Corner, we've, we've gone from thinking it was the best thing that you know, possibly could happen, right? A real silver lining from COVID to realizing mm, may, maybe, maybe we need to rethink this a little bit long term, right? Because it's just not the same. It, it's, it's not. Yeah. I think there'll be a healthy balance that we find eventually. I personally have I've worked from home for a long time. Like I said, I love it. I love being able to go do a load of laundry, you know, in the middle of the day or something like that. Or, you know, before, before we started doing all these video chats, you know, I, I was no makeup hair on top of the head, pajamas some days all day. Um, but um, I, I still think that you've got to have that one-on-one face time you know we had I had my team half of my team in last week to Orlando we were doing site visits and planning meetings at the Hilton Orlando and and the Hilton like Buena Vista uh, for some upcoming events in 2022 and I had everybody over to my house for a pizza party because we had um it was team member appreciation week which was good timing and for all of our Hilton Worldwide sales team which, which is about 250 people I like I said before I, I sit under Hilton Worldwide sales and, and we did a virtual pizza party for all 250 people. And it was awesome. It was like an hour. So I had my team come over, we ordered pizza, you know, and, and had some wine and, and there's, there's just nothing that's going to get any better than that, you know? So I think it'll be a healthy balance eventually. So I would say, try and find that balance as you're working virtually, make those connections when you can don't lose touch, you know, really try and stay connected and find those personal connections to keep the relationships going. I think you know, what you just said is one of the keys to it is it's not going to happen by coincidence or accident. You really have to make a point of it in a way that you probably, for most of us, didn't have to do when we were in the office every day. You'd walk by someone, yeah. you'd see them on Monday morning, ask about the yeah. weekend, ask what they're doing you know, um, on, on Fridays. And now you don't have that. So I've noticed that I can go days and weeks without having conversations with people that I used to speak with every day or at least one-on-one -on -one yeah. conversations. And you do have to be very conscious of that in, in, order, to, in order to make it happen. It's not going to happen naturally. And do you find yourself when you do talk to them, you're just getting down to business because you've got you to get answers to whatever it is that you need. And you kind of forget that. Hey, how was the weekend? Or what are you doing this weekend? You forget that water cooler coffee talk, right? Yep, absolutely. And, and, and people uh, need that. And so we're, we're seeing in, in you know, staffing a lot of turnover right now. And it's not necessarily because people are going back to the office. I think in many cases, we're seeing people who want um, to go back, right? They're not leaving because they're forced to, they're leaving because they want to. And that's, I think, an unexpected um, scenario. There's so many things with COVID that we didn't see coming, uh, couldn't have predicted the outcome of how it would affect society and, and specifically the, the work environment. And that's one of them is that there are a lot of people who just don't want to work at home. And I, I understand yeah. why they may not have the right environment. They may yeah. um, you know, not have a workspace that's conducive to, to being productive, especially depending on what their job is. So it's, it's yeah. a really interesting time right now. I mean, I do want to ask you about silver lining. So you, you mentioned you know, the, the negative of COVID. We all know what what's, you know, that means to, to, to so many. What about silver linings? Have you seen anything that's that's been a uh, you know a, a pleasant surprise that you you wouldn't have expected as a result of all the changes? Yeah, I think you know we we've uh, we've had to look at doing things differently, and again trying to get you know fresh ideas in a conference, and when we're bringing people back together for the first time in a couple of years that they haven't seen each other, I mean that right there is exciting. But then how can we get those relationships jump started again, you know, and for our organization, we've had a lot of changes, you know, when, when as a company, we had to downsize a bit and we're rebuilding, you know, a lot of the, the organization I said under the commercial services organization. And now that includes marketing and IT and customer experience, as well as our sales operations and our worldwide sales team. So it's a whole new group of people that are coming together for the first time. 
So it's made us get super creative in how we're going to execute the event to have that cross-functional collaboration that maybe we would have just not, it maybe wouldn't have been as important before. So small group settings, really letting the attendees drive the, the themes and the, um, the discussions and the topics that they are most interested in. So it's a rather personal development. I think, you know, another silver lining is that, that wellness and, and people's mental well-being and health and fitness have really taken a, a forefront more than ever. You know, so I know as a company, we are very focused on people's personal well-being um, and making sure that they are balanced because it's taken a toll on everybody mentally and physically, some of us, you know, over the last year. And we want to make sure that, that we acknowledge that and we think about that as we develop our content. So I think that's a really good thing that's come out of all this. Yeah, that that is that is good. Well, you, you you're sort of forced to 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 make those changes, but on the other side of it, when you when you look at what that represents, you, you realize it's not all bad. I I think, um, and and you you know at times there's almost some guilt associated with that, and and but it's you know, we have to take the wins where we can, and um, you know I I think there's a lot of us who've. Um, come to appreciate you know, the the work situation we have in, in an entirely different way, right? Just just being able to go to work is is, well, is something to be thankful for. That's true. I mean, over the last year, you know, you know my story during COVID. Um, besides losing my team, I lost my boss, my direct boss, and and I was a vice president, and I was um, taken. My title was taken down to the executive director level. So, you know, there was a lot of stuff that people were going through, but I was so thankful still to have a job at the time. You know, I probably told you this because I love my company, 28 years, you know, and I started out as a, a sales manager and worked my way up to director of sales and regional supporting a group of hotels and then went to corporate office. And, and, and I love my job and the people I work with. And, and the thing that makes it so great is, um, you know, the, the people that you surround yourself with besides the job that you do. And, and that's what's kept me with Hilton for so long. And, and honestly, I think I would have been devastated if I had not been able to stay with Hilton. <laughs> See what you're thinking about it. You know, so I mean, it's really what, <laughs> what, what makes, it, makes it great to go to work every day is the reward that you get, the relationships and the job that you do, you know, and having a purpose. Um, okay, we, okay, so. We have a huge purpose. So that, you know, seeing you get emotional about this, right? I think is is just so indicative of of how you you think of of the you know, the organization that you work for, the situation yeah. that you're in, and it and it really is unique. I, I I you know wanted to try to find and could not find the statistic in advance of of speaking with you today about how many people you know basically stick with one organization throughout their career. And my conclusion was that it's so rare, it's like 0. 0.000 something that there's not even a statistic on that. But what I did see is that most people change jobs an average of about 12 and a half times throughout their professional career. That, Seriously? That's, that's the norm. Yep. Seriously? Wow. I can't imagine. Uh, that would be tough. And for um, you, you couldn't imagine, but, but for almost yeah. everyone else, clearly that that's what's normal. So what is it? Yeah. I mean, if you have to look back and say, you know, what is it that, it, it, so yes, it's Hilton, but what about Hilton, uh, you know, brings that out in you, do you think? I mean, because it is so unique. I, I, I I'm, yeah. I'm dying to know if you even have an, you know, a, an understanding of why you feel the way you do. You know, I've thought about it over the years because, I mean, obviously everybody goes through times where they get frustrated at this or that, you know, and you're like, ah, I'm going to update my resume, you know, but in my, you know, my husband always says, yeah, you're never going to leave Hilton. I mean, come on, stop. <laughs> but I think that the, the thing that keeps me grounded is a couple things. One, I've been given a great opportunity every step of the way throughout my career to do what I wanted to do. And this is something that, you know, I, thinking about what would I tell young people coming up in the career. You got to tell your boss what you want to get what you want. You're the captain of your own ship. You know, and I've always thought of that, you know, my career is, is no one else is going to um, control my career except for me. And so I've always made it a point. I don't know whether it's deliberately at the beginning or just because maybe I'm a little bit of a big mouth when it comes to that kind of stuff. I don't know. But, but I was my boss what I wanted as the next step in my career. And I would give 
advice to not, don't sit back, don't wait for it to come to you. I've had team members, people that worked for me over the years say, well, you didn't come and ask me if I wanted this and that promotion. I'm like, no, you've got to, you've got to be the one asking for the promotion. You've got to be the one telling your boss what you want your next step to be. And then let's make a plan to get there. You know, help me make a plan. What can I do? That's, that's, so I was given a, every step of my career with Hilton. I started out with double trees as a salesperson, was promoted to director of sales. Then I moved up to a big box Hilton. Um, then I was made a regional. Then I moved on to corporate office and then given this chance to run the events team four and a half years ago. You know, I, I never thought that um, I had a roadblock in my career. And, it, and so being able to progress in a company like this kept, kept me in one place. So that's one. And the second thing is I, I kind of mentioned before is the people, you know, because we we're a hospitality company. So we just work with really nice people. You know, everyone I work with, I'm friends with, you know, like they're the people that I would want to hang out with. And so that's what's kept me. And, and the third thing is Hilton's got an incredible culture. You know, we were founded 101 years ago and Conrad Hilton said, you know, it's our goal to, to fill the earth with the light and warmth of hospitality. And so, you know, we try to, to anchor everything we do to that purpose. And, you know, I think it's proven that people with a greater calling and a higher purpose, they, they do well in their careers because they know what they're working for. So it's interesting. So you, uh, you did this unconsciously, I'm sure, but twice you said, you were given an opportunity. And, and I, you know, having observed you and your work ethic for so long, you know, you, you've earned it every step of the way. I mean, you're, you know, you work as hard as anyone I know, and you've, you've committed your professional life to the organization. And, and so you, you certainly weren't given anything. You had to earn it. Um, and I think you, you know that, but it's interesting that you still clearly have an appreciation for the situation where, that's also rare when, when, you know, I, I think, you know, today's employee too often, um, you know, doesn't um, have that appreciation and it needs to be mutual. I, I, I believe that, right. The organization needs to pre yeah. appreciate the employee and the employee should also appreciate the organization. And um, you, you clearly have that yeah. and you've been given opportunities, if you if you want to call that, as a result of earning it. I mean, there's no question about that, um, which I think you know. I hope you know. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. I think, you know, you and I've had this discussion before, I think, that because we talk a lot about this, you know, over Thanksgiving or whatever we get together, you know, what, what keeps young people in one place, or, you know, or what keeps employees motivated. And I, and I think you said to me, there's got to be three things. And I think about this a lot, you know, that you got to like what you do and see opportunity. You got to like your team and the people you work with. And you've got to feel like you're fairly compensated for what you do. Right. Right. I think yep. that's you. It, and if those are out of balance or there's, you know, you've got two, don't have one, maybe you can live with it. But if, you, if you're missing two and you only have one of the three, you're going to feel really unbalanced. And I think that's what you got to think about and, and not always just jump to the next opportunity for a couple thousand dollars. It's in the long run. Could I have changed jobs over the years and made more money at some point in my career? Maybe. I, I don't know because I never really explored it because I've always felt like I, all, I had a balance of all three. I like what I did, the people I work with. I always saw opportunity to advance. And I felt like I was fairly compensated. So, you know, and again, maybe it's a unique situation because with, with Hilton, you think about just hotels, but we've got sales, marketing, technology, finance. I mean, legal, human resources, communications team. I mean, just think about it. You know, I, you know I've you know, i tried to talk uh, your daughter into looking at Hilton as a career because she's majoring in communications. And I think she'd be amazing um, to have the opportunity to travel and, and use your skill set there's a job for just about anybody in, in a company like that. So, you know, again, you know, my choice, I like the big corporation and the opportunities that were available to, to stay and grow and have that balance. Well, and, and you, you touched on managing your own career and you, you said something which I, I think is so important uh, as an employee. It's something that I did as an employee everywhere I went. I, I, I did two things. I, I looked around to see 
who's, who's my competition, right? To, to be number one. And then what do I have to do to advance? And I think that is such an important thing. So I want to not you know go too far past it because I tell everyone when, when I have the opportunity to always know that what, you know, what your boss expects of you, your manager, whatever you want to call that person is job number one and everything else is a distant second. So much so that it's not even worthy of talking about unless you understand what number one is. And I you know, can tell any employee that we have right now what to do if they want to advance. But the reality is, I don't get asked that often, um, it, even though that that answer would always be forthcoming. Is that something, do you know, do you remember, is that advice someone gave you or is that just something you started doing naturally? You know, I don't know. I think maybe it was something that happened over time with, with my career when I saw that what I wanted and and I made sure everyone knew it. Um, but, you know, you're, you're so right in that it's important to make sure that you understand what the expectations are and you're focused on that. I, I remember a story once I would, I took over a hotel supporting sales and marketing for a hotel because before I was in events, I was, I was in sales. And I guess I, I didn't say that at the beginning, but I grew up through sales and I went into this hotel and it was a convention hotel in a downtown city. And that was the priority fill in with group business convention room blocks and that was it. And our director of sales was worried about creating little play areas in the lobby for kids. And I had to sit this director of sales down and I hope this person never hears this podcast. They <laughs> know what don't worry. We, don't, we have so few listeners, the odds are that they won't. That's okay. <laughs> but but I, I had to sit this person down and say, you got to forget all of that. Your focus is group business. You need to know what's coming in your pipeline, what you need to move to turn definite, what you had on the books the same time last year, so you can beat those numbers and your booking pace. And, and just, I was dumped out. I think that was like the first time that I encountered someone who really was so far off track in what they were focusing on as a, as a leader in this hotel. It was impacting the hotel's revenue. And so, um, you know, I, I would so agree that it's great advice. Talk to your boss. What do you need to be focused on right now that, that's going to help me succeed and help us as an organization succeed and do that? Everything else is back burner or, you know, can wait, but focus on what's most important. Absolutely. Yeah. So it was really neat to hear you say that because I don't think that's ever come up before, at least not in that particular way. Um, so two more questions. And one is, uh, something I thought about after looking at your your profile on LinkedIn today, and you alluded to it as well. You you didn't start off in the role that you're in now, and you even had to earn the vice president title twice, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And and to be at an organization for almost 29 years, and to go through you know, multiple you know, job titles, uh, job responsibilities, geographies, that requires significant patience, and I don't know that, you know, if you look back to 28 years ago, um, did, did you, did you ever think that you, you would envision your career to end up that way? Did you think I'm, I'm here for the long term, or, you know, uh, did, did, did it just sort of evolve that way? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I don't know when you're young and coming out of college, you know, my degree was in hospitality and I guess I'm just kind of one of those. I don't like a lot of change in that you know, in the career, I stuck with it. And I, I think the statistics in the hospitality school at FSU are that 65% of people don't stay in the career. But ironically, I work, my boss that I work for, who's the SVP of sales, the more wide sales, we graduated together from, from FSU. I don't know if I ever told you that. It's kind of funny story. That's great. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of patience and that's something that I'm always trying to work on. Um, but I think that uh, looking back, I probably would have said it. My preference would have been to stay with one company if it was possible. I would have never said I would end up in events because I thought I was going to be in sales and that was it. And, and it was just a few, four and a half years ago, um, somebody in an organization that I really respect and admire asked me to take a chance and trust them and take a leap of faith and, 
move into this role and they would help me to get that vice president role that I, that again, I had said, I want to be a vice president. <laughs> and they said, take this job and, and I will help you with your career advancement. And, and they lived up to their, their word. And, and uh, so I would have never thought I'd be in events, but again, you know, what a great job to be able to help people connect and go to great places and have amazing experiences. But it's, it's taken decades, right? I mean, decades yeah. of, of, of consistent, you know, work and effort and success and achievement yeah. that, you know, I, I think that can be, that's daunting in a way for, for, you know, all the societal changes we've had generational changes where, you know, that is something, you know, success, worthwhile success takes time takes effort. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to be successful quickly in anything, not, not anything that's yeah. meaningful. And yeah. you know, that is such a hard thing to impart today on you know, young professionals who have instant gratification. We, we all know that social media has, yeah. you know, they have right. the, the encyclopedia you know, of the you know, history of the world at their fingertips all the time. And they're not used to having to be patient. And so I, that's why I wanted to ask about that. I'm, I'm sure you weren't thinking in those terms necessarily you know, when you were starting out, but you, you, you couldn't be where you are without having some degree of, of, of patience along the way. And, and it's a really important trait, I think. Yeah, I think you, know, you just have to understand when you're starting out that you don't know everything, even though sometimes I think you think you do. You know, and then it's just like, you know, when you're a kid and you think your parents don't know anything and you realize in your mid twenties that they do. I think it's the same with, with work that you, you look back, I look back now and I remember sitting in meetings and being so nervous and, and presenting to leaders and being so nervous because I didn't have all the answers and I didn't know it all. Now I can sit with any of our, you know, executive committee members, our chief commercial officer, who is my boss's boss and president of our organization I've got a meeting with in two weeks and, and have all the confidence of my years of experience, those decades of experience to draw on, that I worked my way up through the hotels, that I, you know, I worked as a regional supporting multiple hotels and now having this experience for the last 10 years or so working a matrix organization like our corporate offices and having to work with all the different brands and marketing and communications and HR and financed all the different teams that have a great depth of experience to draw on. That's what gives you the confidence, you know, and that's what gives you that I can walk in any meeting and talk to anybody about anything because I've done it, you know, and I, and I know where others, I have walked in their shoes. So I, I know how they feel about things, or at least I think, you know, I think they do. So um, I think that part, you definitely have to be patient about because until you've lived it, you really don't know it all, right? No, you can't. And and it's something that transcends industries and, and professions. I talk to my team about that all the time is that I have a very big arsenal now. I, I there's not a situation that right. I can that will that will throw me off. Although I say that and there's always something new, but yeah. um <laughs> that 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 was built over over so many years and you can't fast forward that. So while I'm happy to impart my knowledge, you have to live it. And, and you have to do it. And, and I think that, um, you know, that lack of willingness to walk through the fire, um, yeah. you know, climb the mountain, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, really limits a lot of young professionals today. And that's why having someone, you know, that that's, that's done it like you have and, and, and been committed, um, and, and not quit, not given up, you know, continue to charge forward. And I do think of it as walking through a minefield, working through for a big yeah. organization like Hilton, right? Because there's a lot of politics and interpersonal things that happen. And I could never do it. I have too big of a mouth. That's not a surprise. But, you know, it takes a special, unique individual to do that. But I think that mindset of commitment to longevity, commitment to success is the key to it and not um, expecting success to happen too early, right? Because it's just not realistic. Yeah. You know, there's always that little bit of luck, too. You know, I had a, a boss one time say, you know, it's a lot of hard work, but there's also a little bit of an element of luck sometimes. But if you don't have the hard work, there's no luck in the world that's going to, you know, get you to where you want to be ultimately. I think with a, a successful career. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I could, uh, you know, 
identify or point to anyone that I know in my personal or professional life that um, has is able to be lucky for decades at a time. Right. 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 I mean, no. it's not luck at that no. point. It's just not. Yes, a little no. bit along the way helps, but consistency over time is exactly. is really the key. That's it. Um, might help you with a big win every now and then, you know, big contract signed or something, right place, right time, but it, not for the long haul. No, it, it's that, that dodge of determination, you know, that you just, you want to stick with it because you have an end goal of whatever it might be. You know, again, for me, it was be vice president. That was always my goal to be a, be a vice president. It took me 28 years to get there. You know, this one's going to stick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'll be hitting 30 years with the company in another year and a half. And, I'm not going anywhere till, you know, till it's time to retire. This is it. <laughs> so, so that's, so you, you just, this perfect segue into the last question I want to ask you is, is that determination, it, you know, call it drive, call it motivation. Where do you think that comes from when you look back and, and we may have had this conversation, you know, at a Thanksgiving or, or, or over drinks. Yeah. Um, but, but have you been able to identify that to see, you know, why do you think you have that drive? What, what is it? What in your life brought that out? Do you think? This is going to be like the Oprah moment. It's going to make me tear up again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> There's no gift if that, so it's not really an Oprah moment. There's no gift under your seat. Oh, oh no. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I guess it was just a good work ethic growing up. You know, our parents were hard workers. They both were career people. You know, our mom was a teacher. Our dad was in building construction, commercial contract contractor and you know just always seeing them they never slacked off they never uh, called in sick you know they they knew what their job was and that they had to do it and they were raising three kids and they put us all through FSU through college and you know and and seeing that I think there was just never any question there was never any any question for me about working hard or, or having integrity with work and you know and not not doing the basics of you show up you show up on time, you show up ready to go, you have a good attitude about it, you know, you try and be positive and, and network and, and, you know, make those relationships that will help you with your career. Um, so I think that was it. I think it's just, you know, uh, just the, just the work ethic that our parents gave us really. And I hope they're listening and, you know, cause I do owe it to them. <laughs> They, 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 they do listen there. You point it up as if they're, no, they're, they can still listen here. They're not up yet. So that, that let's, let's, we guys, I need to clarify that. Yes. They're just Please in Claremont. They're, they're not, they're not quite in heaven yet. Although no, I didn't that is, mean that. <laughs> um, they will, they will listen. They're, they're one, they're one of our faithful few um, who, who listen, but um but yeah, that's they watch my stuff too. I've done I, another podcast or article or something. They they're always good about checking it out. That's great. That's great. Well, um, thank you for for doing this today. And I, you know, I, I you know this already, but I really do admire everything that you've accomplished. And I think it's it serves as a really valuable lesson to young professionals who do want to achieve, who are ambitious to know that, you know, when I think of you, I think of you know enthusiasm always, I think of, you know, passion, you know, in a way that just, it, you can't, you can't miss it. And I think that's infectious. I think people notice that. And I think people are extremely attracted to those who show up, you know, wherever they are. And, and look, it's not always easy. I know that. Um, but you're always, you know, going to go a hundred percent and what you do. And, 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 you know, if you can do that as hard as it is, you know, rewards will happen. And um, it's been really neat to see, that happened for you because I know, I know it's well-deserved. So um, thank you. I feel the same way about you. I'm so proud of you and all you've done. And I could never do what you do. You say you could never work for a big organ, you know, matrix organization like Hilton, but I could never run my own business. So I have much admiration and respect for you and everything that you've built from your den, you know, to, to build a, an organization that's such an incredible, well-respected staffing organization. And, you know, and, and now my daughter's in, in recruiting and she's kind of, she watches what you do and it so admires you and you helped her, you know, get her, her feet in the door. And it's been, it's been great, but much, much love and respect back right back at you. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's fun to see. And she's going to do awesome because she had such a great role model. So thank you. And, <laughs> and thank you. And this is, this has been a lot of fun. So um, who knows, maybe we'll uh, I'll have you come back when you hit that 30th anniversary. How's that? 
I think I need to interview you next time. Maybe. <laughs> I'll interview you. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I know. I, 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 um, I haven't had that happen yet. So, um, Ooh, I'm in. I signed me up. <laughs> all right. So someday soon. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. Okay. And uh, thank, thank you, you everyone for listening and we will, um, I'll see you next week. Thank you. See you soon.